joining us. Uh, today's webinar is going to be uh, 30 minutes on Blaze Meter, uh, learning the introductory practices to performance testing and open source performance testing tools. Uh, my name is Michael Schaff, and I'm a performance testing consultant here at Blaze Meter. Uh, so thank you for joining us, uh, whether it's the morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where uh, on the globe you are. Let's jump right in and get started. So in a nutshell, Blaze Meter is an agile, on-demand, SaaS-based performance testing solution. It's open source compatible. Uh, it supports primarily JMeter, but uh, we now support nine other open source tools like Locust, Gatling, Selenium, Jenkins, etc. It's a scalable platform, supports mobile and web applications, and is fully integrated with CI and APM tools to provide, to provide users with a deeper understanding as to where uh, their performance bottlenecks are and performance issues uh, uh, that are on your application. Now, why is that so important? Why do we do performance testing? Uh, customer experience uh, surveys have shown has been or is one of the most important uh, criteria for determining whether a user is going to continue on a, a, a particular website or application or if they're going to abandon it for another one. 70% of users who were surveyed uh, said that if there is not uh, an uptime of five seconds, uh, or less, they're going to abandon uh, the website. Now, this is you know detrimental for all sorts of reasons. Uh, not only does it hurt the bottom line of your uh, of your company, but it also hurts your reputation and it drives traffic to your to your competitors. So you, you lose on both sides when you don't care about performance testing and when you don't care about delivering a, a great user experience. Uh, but obviously, you're here, so that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and cover on how to do that. So Blaze Meter is built as an open source performance testing platform, meaning we are not open source, but we execute open source performance testing scripts. So if you, uh, you know, we originally built around JMeter, but we've expanded beyond JMeter. Uh, anything you can do in JMeter, you can do with BlazeMeter. We're 100% compatible. Uh, and we're going to use these open source tools to determine and evaluate how our particular application behaves under various load conditions. So with BlazeMeter, you can easily scale tests up to the millions of concurrent virtual users. We've currently run tests at over 2 million concurrent uh, users with some of our clients, uh, but we have the capability to do even higher. Uh, we provide a user-friendly interface uh, that gives you both, uh, you know, easy, uh, you know, you don't have to be a professional programmer or developer to be able to use BlazeMeter but we still provide you enterprise value as far as reporting and analysis. Uh, we're also uh, much lower cost using open source tools. Open source tools are free. Uh, BlazeMeter uh, has a, you know, a very low cost of entry to go ahead and get started uh, as compared to other traditional legacy products. Uh, and one of the things that I, I want to discuss here at the beginning is how performance testing methodologies have changed. Um, it used to be that when you developed a piece of code or had a, uh, you know, a release, you would send that over to what's called a center of excellence. So your company would hire a performance engineer who his only job was performance testing. And he would, uh, you would give the code over to him, typically wait a couple of weeks because, of course, he's got other projects that are going on at the same time. He'll test your code and write a report and send you back the report. Now, this model has many different problems, but uh, to mention a few of the big ones, it, it's slow and it's inefficient. So instead of having a developer sit around and do nothing for three weeks while he waited for uh, his performance uh, report to come back, he's going to be moving on to other projects. And everyone knows how hard it is to come back to something you know, that you've moved on from a couple of weeks ago and read a report and then get right back into the flow of things. It's inefficient and it's very slow. Uh, what BlazeMeter allows you to do is, is we call shift left. It's being able to test continuously and being able to test earlier in your development life cycle. So by democratizing performance testing, we allow the developers to do their own performance testing uh, while they're doing their developing. So this way you can identify your bottlenecks much earlier when they are uh, cheaper and easier and less time consuming to fix. Uh, and you can do all of that while eliminating the center of excellence altogether and really uh, take your agile uh, development life cycle, uh, software development life cycle all the way to, uh, to become fully agile. 
So SaaS, uh, you know, BlazeMeter is a SaaS uh, platform. All you need is a browser and an internet connection, and you can begin testing right away. We do have an on-premise version for people who have, uh, you know, more stringent security uh, issues, or if there's a corporate firewall, we do have an on-premise engine that will uh, allow you to continue to use BlazeMeter. Um, we also support uh, web and mo web, mobile, and microservices, and we've just released our new API test maker. So we can do uh, load testing and functional testing for your APIs uh, while reusing your same scripts. So you don't need to develop uh, new scripts. As I mentioned, we're pure SaaS. There's no setup. We're 100% open source compatible. All you do is bring us your scripts, upload it into BlazeMeter, and we can start uh, testing. Uh, we're cloud-based, so we can, uh, you know, we host everything in the cloud, and uh, we also can have a private cloud or an on-premise solution uh, for people who need it. Uh, massively scalable, you know, into the millions of concurrent users, which anyone who uh, has experience with open source performance testing tools knows that that's a, uh, a, a really big issue. And of course, we have our own open source uh, project called Taurus, which is basically a non-GUI form of JMeter that easily integrates with uh, many other uh, tools and uh, is, you know, slowly becoming uh, very popular on the, uh, on the um, open source uh, community. We also provide uh, comprehensive reporting because what good is an open source tool if you're not getting the insights that you, that you need? So by bringing all of your reports into one dashboard, putting, uh, you know, some color coding to it, making it graphical, making it easy to use and to sort through, saves a lot of time and makes the, the value of these tools uh, much higher. Uh, as I said, uh, we can integrate with CI, uh, CD tools. Uh, we can do both uh, REST-based API and functional API testing. And we have uh, application performance monitoring tools, uh, which you can integrate with as well. So that's enough about the high level of uh, blaze meter. What I want to do now is transition into showing you how we can uh, record a JMeter script. Uh, we get a, this question a lot. People want to move over to open source tools because they're, they're more modern, they're more agile, they're faster, they're cheaper uh, from traditional uh, legacy tools. Uh, so making that transition, there's a little bit of a learning curve. So we've tried to make that as easy as possible. So what we've done here is created a Chrome extension. And this Chrome extension will allow us to record uh, HTTP, HTTPS traffic uh, to whatever, uh, you know, anything we can point our browser to and turn that into a JMeter script. So the easiest way to do that is through our Chrome extension. You do need to have a BlazeMeter account to be able to utilize the record function of the Chrome extension. It doesn't have to be a paid account. It can be a free account, uh, but you do have to have login credentials. So make sure that you're logged into your BlazeMeter account and then we'll go to the Chrome extension which you see I've had saved right up here. The first thing we always do is, uh, is, say, is uh, name our tests. So this is gonna be webinar 10.3. And there we go, now I'm gonna hit record. And so everything I do now in my browser, the HTTP traffic is gonna be recorded by the extension. So we've set up here a demo uh, travel agency just to show a typical user case uh, or uh, you know, a user pathway through an e-commerce uh, type site. We're going to choose uh, some flights here. Let's uh, go from San Diego to New York. We're going to find our flight. We have a selection of flight. Let's go with Virgin America. So we've selected our flight. And now we insert our information. We're going to purchase our flight. And now we've come to our confirmation page. So this is a very typical scenario for anyone who's booking a flight, booking a hotel, buying shoes, uh, you know, coming on and checking out some new, uh, new news or new product updates on, on your website. It's, very, it's a very basic scenario. So we're gonna go to the Chrome extension. We can stop recording now. And now I have several options. If I hit play, it will launch the test directly from BlazeMeter straight from the Chrome extension. Uh, I can, there's a few criteria that I can set here, but it's not really, it's uh, not really recommended because you're not really configuring your test, but it's a shortcut way of doing it. Uh, we can export directly to JMeter, uh, but first I'm going to edit the recording 
because this is going to record absolutely everything that we have on our browser at the moment, I just want to make sure that we're recording exactly what we want, which is what we have here. We have a reserve page, a purchase page, and a confirmation page. So this looks good. And up here, I can move this over to Taurus uh, as a JSON file or a JMX. JMX is the output file for JMeter. So we're just going to give this a quick second, and there we go. So now uh, we've got a basic JMeter uh, script. Let's go to JMeter itself. If you haven't downloaded JMeter, you can do so from the Apache JMeter website. I strongly recommend it. Uh, and we can find our script. Right here. So as you can see, it's already going to open up with an authorization manager, cookie manager, and cache manager. Uh, this is exactly where uh, you would add in any sort of logic, any controllers or assertions you want a JMeter to make. What this has done is basically give you a uh, framework, uh, a backbone, so to speak, of a JMeter script, which you can then fill in the meat uh, and uh, design your test the way you would like. So let's go. Now we're in BlazeMeter itself. This is uh, your home page when you log in. On the left, you're going to see your recent test runs and uh, some usage report. If you click at the top, but create a test, we've got several different types of tests you can run. Uh, a JMeter test is our most common load test. It's also what I'm going to show you here in just a moment with our JMX script. But you can also run a URL API test, a multi-test, which would be multiple tests uh, running uh, simultaneously, or if you wanted to have uh, multiple geolocations in the test. We, of course, have a Taurus test and a WebDriver test, which is based on uh, uh, Selenium WebDriver plugin with JMeter, and it allows you to uh, open up some JavaScript. It's, it's pretty cool for front-end testing as well. So now let's click on JMeter, the JMeter test. Right here, we're going to upload Okay, so we're going to upload our JMeter script. We're going to name our test. All right, this is, you can also upload any sort of CSV files or database files which are needed for your JMeter test. Uh, so if you wanted to have a CSV file with, uh, you know, different username, password combinations, if you're testing for login authentication, you can upload that here as well. Uh, we're going to select our JMeter version, which uh, we recorded in 3.2. Uh, and we can set here several uh, test configuration settings. So the first, uh, which I am going to start with, is the test failure criteria. Uh, here we can set any sort of criteria. Like, let's, for example, response time uh, in uh, minutes. Let's say if it's greater than three seconds, we're going to have a warning label that says too slow. We can add another one for errors. It says if our error percent is greater than 5%, we're going to say there's too many. We also have the ability of checking this box here. And if you do so, it will actually stop your test if you ever break one of these thresholds. Uh, but we don't want to do that. We want to run the test to completion. So we're going to just apply this. And if any of those criteria are ever broken, we're going to have uh, uh, warning uh, uh, tags uh, available for us. Uh, you can also add in sort of, uh, you know, some JMeter properties, command line arguments, uh, network emulation. We've got several different uh, preset conditions. So if you wanted to test, uh, if you knew that most of your traffic was going to be mobile traffic, you can select uh, different types of, uh, you know, simulate the network that your users are actually going to be coming to you by. So let's just say we've got a good 3G connection. If you want, you can manually put in this information as well. The presets are just to save time. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can also find our APM integrations here. So we've got CloudWatch, CA Technologies APM, New Relic, uh, Dynatrace, App Dynamics, all of the out of the box uh, integrations uh, right there. And if we move over to the right, now we can start configuring this test scenario. So this is a, uh, a talk for a separate uh, webinar, but if you check this uh, box here, you can run this as a functional API test instead of a JMeter load test while keeping the same script. 
we have sandbox mode where if you have a paid account and don't want to run a, uh, a paid test where credits will be deducted, you can click on sandbox mode and it will limit you to 20 concurrent users but it allows you to debug your script so that way you're not wasting credits figuring out why your script isn't working. Uh, so that's really helpful and handy. Uh, next, we need to choose where we're going to originate our load from. We have over 40 different um, Microsoft, AWS, and Google Azure uh, uh, locations that you can select from. Uh, if you need ones that's not listed here, we can support it. You just got to send us an email and let us know, and we'll be able to uh, uh, open that for you. So let's say that we're going to just test U.S. East Virginia. We want to test, uh, let's do... 250 concurrent users, uh, which is well below our capability, but I don't want to overload our demo site in case other people are doing demos at the same time. There's a couple of ways you can configure your users. You can do just what I did right now and type in a specific number of users, and the system will automatically distribute those users, or threads as JMeter calls them, uh, over a specific number of engines. Uh, you can also do it the other way around. If you want to uh, specify a specific number of engines. An engine is uh, your load generator. It's basically how many uh, or the, the machine, the server, which is actually producing the load, producing the threads. Uh, it's a very simple formula. Threads times the number of engines that you have is the total number of users. So as you see here, uh, I've moved my engines to five, so that raised my users to 1,250. This is exactly how easy it is to scale. Uh, with blaze meter. You can simply make that go into the millions if you wanted to, but we're going to keep it at 250. Okay, you can set your ramp up, the number of iterations, and the duration of your test here. Uh, so now that you've uh, uh, configured your test, you can save it. Once you've saved it, you press play. It's that simple. We're going to actually launch this test right now. It typically takes two to four minutes to spin up. Uh, if it takes any longer than that, uh, try restarting. Uh, sometimes it will uh, take a little bit longer if you're running a front-end test with the Selenium WebDriver plugin. That's going to, uh, that's a very resource-intensive uh, test, so you can see a slight uh, delay spinning up, but this should spin up here uh, in just a moment. So while this is going and uh, spinning up, let me take you to a previous test, just so that we can uh, show you how the results look. So this is going to be your overall summary page. It's got all your high-level uh, overview, your max users, your throughput, your error rate, your average response time, your 90th percentile response time, uh, which is basically a, a statistical way of eliminating your outliers, and then uh, your average bandwidth. You're going to have your high-level load and response time uh, graphs here. And let's dig a little bit deeper in here because there's a lot, uh, a lot of results that we can unpack. So if you go to the timeline report, it's basically a graphical representation comparing all of your KPIs versus each URL or page that you tested. So here we've got the number of virtual users in blue hits in green, red is errors, response time is in orange. And we can check the different boxes here. And instead of comparing every page, we can now repay, uh, compare just our confirmation page. Or we can mix this up and compare any, any KPI versus any URL that we tested. If you go and hover over the graph, it'll give you the specific number for the um, moment that you're hovering on. If you want to zoom in, just drag and click. It's very simple. You can zoom in all the way down to a one second granulation. So the, the level of detail is quite outstanding. And this is your timeline report. The time is over, you know, your entire test. On the request statistics tab, you have all of your information in a tabular form. You can also download this as a CSV file if you wanted to uh, you know, look at it outside of the BlazeMeter platform. And uh, you can also specify which specific time uh, by sliding the bar here. It's very important whenever you run a test in BlazeMeter, always check your engine health. You know, as I said, the engine is the server which is generating your load, so that's where uh, all the memory is being used. And here you can see that our memory never went above 52, 50%. 50 
that's really good. If it goes over 60%, it uh, should alarm you that, uh, or should make you aware that uh, the load generator, the engine itself, could be a bottleneck. Because if it uses too much CPU uh, or memory, uh, it's going to either create errors in your test or it's going to slow your traffic down. And you won't be able, to, it, it basically invalidates your results because you won't be able to tell if it was the engine that was actually causing the performance uh, degradation or if it was your application and your servers itself. So always good to check the engine health tab. Our failure criteria, which we set uh, in the beginning, as we can see with this test, we uh, had pass status. This would be a fail if uh, any of the thresholds were crossed. And we also, remember, could have set it to terminate the test if we uh, crossed one of those uh, thresholds. We have our errors report. This is going to have all of your errors uh, listed. We have no errors in this particular test, but if we did have errors, it would be uh, down here. You could uh, look at them either by any labels you've assigned to them, response code, or assertion name. You can also look at them based on the time which they occurred. Here you have your JMeter logs. You can download this. Uh, this is basically uh, your, your, your JMeter logs here. And you can oversee, uh, overview your test configuration on the last tab. Now, being able to performance test uh, you know, locally by yourself uh, is great for speed and efficiency, but it's not very good for collaboration. So what we've done is created a few features which are going to help you work as a team in a more agile sense where you can uh, easily collaborate while still maintaining control of your test. We have here a share button. When you click and turn the sharing on, it gives you a read-only link. So you can send this link to anybody you like and they'll be able to access the results of your test without being able to alter anything. It's a read-only link. And when you're done, you can simply click off and the link becomes invalid. We also have an executive summary. This is really helpful if you need to present your results either to a client or to a manager or C-level executive who maybe isn't so uh, technical minded or either they don't understand it, uh, all the in-depth technical aspects or they don't care about them. This allows you to give a high level overview. You can rename everything. You can add your logo. You can put your own description here and it's going to pull some of the top stats from your, uh, uh, from your test. So you can give this, uh, you know, as you can see, you can customize it, make it look really beautiful for your company. It's got graphs in there. Really easy to read, great for high level overview. And so that is basically a very quick high level overview of um, BlazeMeter results. We can go back, because we should have results for the test which is currently running. And as you see, these are live results uh, from the test which I launched with you just a few moments ago. You can see that we've ramped up to 193 from our max users. Our throughput's looking okay. Our errors are great. Response time is good. Bandwidth is good. And so we will see this data as it's coming in live. I want to go over just a few other things before uh, we wrap up and start our Q&A session. So if you have any questions, feel free to start typing them out. I'll get to them in just a moment. Uh, I would like to point out our blog. We work very hard and have many uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of articles, video tutorials, uh, helpful Q&A sessions, which have been recorded all on our blog. Uh, it's very easy to use. You've got all your topics here on the left. You can search for a specific topic, uh, and this is updated almost daily. Uh, in, in fact, I think it is daily. Uh, great information here. This should be your number one uh, resource for not only BlazeMeter, but performance testing with open source tools in general. You're going to find a lot of answers to most of your questions right here. For people who want to learn in a more structured manner, uh, we do have a uh, beginner's course uh, for performance testing. Uh, the URL is onboarding.blazemeter.com. And you can see here, this takes you from being an absolute newbie, uh, someone who doesn't know anything about JMeter or anything about BlazeMeter, and gets you all the way down uh, through lectures and uh, articles, exercises, 
takes you all the way to advanced features uh, and advanced uh, testing scenarios. Highly recommend it. If anybody has further questions that I, I won't answer, that I'm not able to answer here, please feel free to send us an email. Uh, you can reach out to us uh, through our website with the request a demo button, or you can fill out the post webinar survey, which has the ability for you to request a demo as well. So does anybody have any questions uh, that I can get to now? Is there anything I can, uh, that I either didn't mention enough or didn't mention clearly? If uh, you would like me to go and show you something else in the reports, uh, let me know. We've got about three minutes for uh, questions. Okay, so somebody asked, how does uh, Blaze Meter uh, improve upon uh, JMeter? So there, that's a very good question. We get that question a lot. Uh, Blaze Meter is 100% JMeter compatible, so you can, uh, anything you can do locally in JMeter, you can do with Blaze Meter in the cloud. But really, there's four key areas that Blaze Meter uh, brings uh, enterprise value to, which JMeter uh, lacks in. The first being scalability. JMeter will not allow you to, uh, I mean, if you want to scale up and do even a test with 10,000 concurrent users, which is not that large of a test for most companies, uh, is very difficult because each engine will only allow you between 500 and 1,000 virtual users. So if you wanted to run that locally in uh, JMeter, you would have to string together a whole serv uh, uh, server infrastructure in order to be able to support that testing. With Blaze Meter in the cloud, you can do that really quickly and easily. The second is reporting. JMeter uh, reporting itself, you gotta look through basically mountains of log data to be able to get any valuable insight out of that. And as you see here, Blaze Meter puts it in a real-time graphic format for you that's easy to interact with and collaborate with. Uh, the third thing would be uh, professional services. Uh, if you don't know how to write a JMeter script or under a tight deadline, if you need somebody to either write the script for you, monitor the test for you, run the test for you, we have a professional services team that is able to offer that type of service where uh, JMeter being open source does not. And last but certainly but not least, uh, customer service. Open source tools, The if you have a question or uh, a bug that you can't figure out, uh, your best bet, your only option really is to go to a, an open source tools forum and try to either ask a question and the answer you get may or may not be reliable or it may not come at all. Uh, with Blaze Meter, we've got, uh, you know, round the clock uh, support staff both in Israel and in California uh, to help you out with that. All right. Uh, well, unless there's any other let me get to one last question. The difference between users and threads, JMeter is, uh, uses the language for threads. So they're, and to answer your question really simply, they're, they're the same thing. Uh, virtual users is a little bit easier way to have a business conversation rather than calling them threads, but in JMeter itself, they're called threads. And on our website, uh, you see sometimes the terms are used interchangeably. Uh, because the, at, the, at the same, uh, at, at the end of the day, a thread is the same thing as a virtual user. Okay. Uh, well, that wraps it up for today. Uh, please uh, fill out the uh, post-webinar survey and uh, leave us your contact information if you uh, want to continue this discussion uh, on either this topic or on other performance testing tools. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Once again, my name is Michael Schaff, and I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Have a good day.